we're gonna keep going. Um, don't know why we're losing the stream tonight. Um, but anyhow, I, I want to start by saying that I want to share with you at least one aspect of fasting tonight. And oftentimes when we think about fasting, and like last Monday we were talking about um, uh, we were talking about, you know, denial, self-denial for, um, for, for Lent. And when we talk about fasting tonight, and we connect self-denial and um, prayer and going without, um, which is a very important thing. Um, Sometimes we f may not realize that there's another aspect to self-denial and another aspect to also to fast. And so um, I cut off something, uh, a browser that might have been interrupting us. And so I think that we are uh, encoding pretty well. We're stream streaming pretty well now. Uh, so again, most gracious God, we just ask that you bless us as we come together and meditate on your word tonight. And as we do so, we ask that you touch and bless everyone who have joined us tonight. And we pray, God, that um, the, in, the, the stream uh, being interrupted did not inconvenient anyone. As we come together with our hearts and minds, uh, stay in you like we say, and, and seeking to see what revelation that you would give us during this Lenten period, this time of Lent, that it may enhance our spiritual connection to you and indeed even bring miracles in our lives. Now, if we, if we were to look at the scripture, for instance, like Ezra 8, the 8th chapter of Ezra, verses 21 to 23, you'll see a passage of scripture where when the children of Israel was leaving the Babylonian captivity, how they fasted and they prayed. They prayed and they fasted. And because it was a dangerous trip, uh, not only was the journey very hard and long, it would take several months, uh, three, four, five months, depending, but also uh, there was always danger of being attacked by um, other people, other armies, or armies, period. They didn't have an army of their own. And the scriptures state very clearly in verse 23 that God heard the prayers uh, and through the prayers and the fasting, God got them back to Judah, back to Jerusalem safely. That's Ezra 8, 21 and 22 and 23. So the obvious benefit of fasting is very clear it's in many places in the scriptures. I use Ezra 8, 21 through 23 as an example, but of course there are many, many other places. Now you know there are also some physical benefits to fasting. First of all, I always advise people to check with their medical profession, professionals to make sure that they get a full understanding of what they can or cannot do in terms of fasting. Remember, there are many ways of fasting. There's not just one way of fasting. And um, you can Google these things and check them out. Um, you can have liquid intake and so forth while you're fasting. So there are other things that you do uh, that um, depending on your physical condition or your medical condition, so you should check with your uh, medical profession, professional people first. But the many benefits, as you can see, people talk about giving you clarity of mind, um, 
obviously you fast, you meditate, you have special spiritual connection to God, you you know, it, it just take you to another place and I I know that many, many, many people can testify to that. <clears throat> I, I, I advocate fasting uh, as a means of, uh, of enhancing our spiritual uh, relationship with God. And clearly, as I'm, I'm repeating myself here, but, but I want to summarize this, and clearly we can see um, to, uh, for it, well, the example from Ezra 8, 21 to 23 and that is um, accepted by God and we receive blessings uh, when we pray and when we fast. But I really want to turn your attention to Zechariah 8 18 through 19. Zechariah 8, 18 through 19. You can jot that down. And if you don't have, the, we don't have the time for you to turn to that tonight, you can certainly look it up another time. Zechariah 8, 18 through 19. And I want to read that for you. The Lord Almighty gave this message to Zechariah. The fast hell on the 4th, 5th, 7th, and 10th months will become festivals of joy and gladness for the people of Judah. You must love truth and peace. So what I want to share with you tonight as I underscore what I just read, God's message to Zechariah, the fast hell in the fourth, fifth, seventh, tenth months. So the usual time of fasting, even the time that we that that we that we um, allocate for fasting. God wants it to end, or He wants them to become festival, jubilee, blessed times of joy and gladness, because He wants to turn. He wants to to convert. He wants to turn. He wants to make our sackcloth become garment of joy. So when we go into self-denial, as we meditate on this time of Lent, and when we fast also, and any time we do these things, even when it's not Lent, let us do it with the full realization that first God blesses us for doing that, and second is that God is leading us to joy and gladness because of fasting and praying. So that is what I want to leave with us tonight. So when you read passages about fasting and praying, turn to a passage like Zechariah 8, 18 and 19 because ultimately it's all about rejoicing and i just want to just thank god for you tonight ask that god touch you and bless you and lift you up and just continue to stay close to him pray and meditate take some time if you haven't done it yet until we get to Resurrection Sunday to have prayer and meditation of your own uh, for the Lenten season and if nothing else join us next week at 9 o'clock right here for another installment of this prayer and, 
and meditation for Lent, and next week we will talk about prayer. Prayer. So we start about start up with self denial. Tonight we did fasting, and next week we will do prayer. God bless you. God bless you, and may He make His face shine mightily upon you. God bless.